Welcome back to another edition of Combat Corner, part of Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and let's talk fights. But before we jump in, thank you for your continued support of our channel. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us. Ring that bell and share our content with your friends. Please leave a comment because the comments actually help engagement with our channel and help us grow our, our, our network of people. The more you comment, the more it helps. I greatly appreciate it. Let's talk fights real fast. I'll be doing a video later this week on UFC 30. Oh, shit, is it four we got this weekend? I think it's 304. But I'll be doing a, a video on 304 later this weekend. Later this week, actually, because the big card is this weekend with Leon Edwards of Allah Muhammad, Tom Aspinall of Curtis Blades. Big, big card in the UK. So I'm really excited about that car. I feel bad for the people having to be up till five o'clock in the morning over there or whatever time it's going to be when they have that main event. It really does suck, actually. But uh, it is what it is. Let's talk about Jake Paul and Mike Perry. I said last week, I'm sick of the gimmick fight. And I stand by being sick of the gimmick fight. But Jake Paul did exactly what I expected him to do to Mike Perry. I expected him to dominate the fight. I expected him to win the fight. I did say it would be by decision. And I am a little surprised that he dropped him three times. But you could see in the first 90 seconds where that fight was going. I have such respect for BKFC fighters. But the BKFC is not boxing. It's not boxing. And it drives me mad when I listen to these trolls, clowns, whatever online say, oh, because he lost, because Jake Paul won, now it's fixed. The only fight, according to them, that hasn't been fixed when Jake Paul's been involved is Tommy Fury because he lost that fight. But had he lost to Tyron Woodley, had he lost to Anderson Silva, had he lost to Nate Diaz, had he lost to Mike Perry, had he lost whatever fights he's been in, they would be saying, yeah, that's what we expected it to happen. Just admit, just admit it, Jake Paul is better than you think. And even if you don't like his personality, you need to respect what he's doing, whether you like it or not. This thought process that a 10-fight fighter should be boxing world champions in boxing is asinine. It's outrageous. In fact, the guys he's fighting are better than the journeymen he should be fighting if they were actual boxers. I, people st speak about the Fury fight. Go look at who Tommy Fury has fought who he fought prior to fighting Jake Paul. He fought bums, journeyman bums. Go look at their records. It's, they're, they're pretty atrocious. They're pretty freaking atrocious. And Tommy Fury did beat Jake Paul. I, I thought he won that fight. I, I thought, I did think he won that fight. Um, I don't think it was a wipeout. I don't know what would happen if they fought again. Could Jake Paul get him back? Possibly. Or it could be the same result. I don't know. But Jake Paul has dropped and knocked out Tyron Woodley. Knocked out cold. He dropped Anderson Silva. He beat Nate Diaz. He's now, and I think he dropped him once, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be, so pardon me. I don't remember all that well. It was, like, it was a year and a half. A year and a half or two years ago. And he just dropped Mike Perry three times. I don't remember Mike Perry being dropped in the UFC. I don't think Mike Perry's ever been dropped in BKFC. Maybe he has been, but he's won every fight he's been in. And I know the opinion of people who they've been saying, well, you know, he, he needed to come out just throwing his hands. In BKFC, that works. This is boxing. It doesn't work that way. 
You can get away with that. That's part of BKFC. It's dirty boxing. It's dirty, and it's great to watch, and I love it. But it's not boxing with boxing gloves. You can fit punches in with your hands when they're not being blocked by gloves. Jake Paul destroyed Mike Perry because Jake Paul knows how to box, and Mike Perry's a brawler. And anyone that wants to sit here and say, well, you should fight people his own size, they weighed in at 200 and 196 pounds. Mike Perry was 196. Jake Paul was 200. You act like Jake Paul fucking weighed in at 240. He weighed in at 200. Mike Perry weighed in at 196. Is Jake Paul bigger than Perry? Yeah. And you know what? People like Michael Bisping were still online saying Mike Perry would win. And then later as the week got closer, saying, I'm a little bit nervous now about this. All these folks were yelling online. BKFC fighters yelling online. Mike Perry, I got Mike Perry. Bro, MMA fighters, I got Mike Perry. You guys haven't learned yet. Jake Paul's training constantly. He's doing this. Now, do I like how he does it? No. Would I rather him fight the journeyman boxers and fight boxers all the way through? Yes, because it would get people to shut the hell up. But Jake Paul's not going to fight as the eighth fight on a fucking boxing card. He can't sell that to people. He doesn't need the box. He does it because he enjoys it. So it's ridiculous when you sit here and say, oh, he needs to box this guy or box that guy. Or I saw that he has an offer from the cruiserweight champion now. If he beats one guy in the top 15, he will give him a title shot. Well, I don't know who the hell's in the top 15 in the cruiserweight division. I, I, I really don't. I'd have to look. But Jake Paul won't beat that guy. Because he doesn't have the experience. But Jake Paul has fought multiple MMA fighters and spare me the nonsense of their old. I don't want to hear it. Because when Anderson Silva beat Julio Cesar Chavez, no one said Anderson Silva's old. And when he fought Jake Paul, everyone was saying Anderson Silva's going to win. And then he didn't. And in fact, got dominated. And then it became, oh, did he fix the fight? Anderson Silva fixing the fight? Are you, what? Y'all, y'all, y'all trip me out, man. MMA fans, I love MMA, but MMA, MMA fans are off the wall with some of the shit that comes out of their mouths that I see on social media. It's laughable. Someone had a flinch to do that. I'm like, because, because Mike Perry comes out with his head up? That's how Mike Perry fights. Have you not watched him? You don't even know what you're talking about if you not if you think oh that that looked anything different than how Mike Perry fought in the UFC. He doesn't fight like this. He doesn't fight like this. He fights cool, hip, swaggy. Like I dare you to hit me. I'm gonna take a shot to land three on you. That's how he fights. Did he not pull the trigger versus Jake Paul? Yeah, he didn't pull the trigger the same way he usually does in BKFC. Why? Because Jake Paul was too fast for him. He said it. You don't believe him? Well, then that's you. Jake Paul is a pretty good fighter for where he is in his career. 10 fights in, 11 fights in. He's done a pretty good job. And he's beaten guys who have 20 years, 15 years of combat martial arts experience, which includes boxing. Anderson Silva was a kickboxer. Did he forget how to punch? But here's the here's the, the stuff that takes the cake. He calls out Mike Tyson again for November. I guess they have a date in November. I don't think that fight will ever happen. I don't want to see it happen. I think Jake Paul will knock his head off. Inside of two rounds. But then. He calls out Alex Pereira, UFC light heavyweight champion. He calls him out. What? And he gets him on FaceTime in the ring. Like, you can't make this up. Jake Paul knows how to sell. Whether you like him or not, he knows how to sell. He didn't get rich by accident. He and his brother are not rich by accident. 
They know what the hell they're doing. There are some brilliant, there are a couple of brilliant guys who figured something out that most people don't couldn't could never figure out. And now they've parlayed it into a boxing career and a WWE career as the U.S. champion in Logan Paul. For which Logan Paul gets tons of credit from WWE wrestlers who talk about how hard that guy works. You cannot question the work ethic of those two guys. You can't. The results are there. They're working their asses off. They didn't get to this point by not working. But you're mad because they're beating guys that you want to see beat them because you don't like their personalities. But Alex Pereira is down to fight Jake Paul. But I'll tell you this. It won't be easy for Alex Pereira if it happens. Alex Pereira fights way upright. Alex Pereira doesn't fight like a boxer. Alex Pereira fights with his hands and his hips. His punches come from here, from down here. He doesn't jab. He doesn't punch like a boxer. It would be very interesting. But Dana White will never let it happen. Dana White will never let it happen. But what Dana White should be doing is Dana White should be creating Zufa Boxing now for real, having a real boxing promotion, get rid of this dumbass power slap garbage, have a real boxing promotion so that your fighters can actually cross-promote fights. Right now, who is Alex Pereira supposed to fight? Magomed Ankalaev. After that fight, what's left? What's left? We already know that fucking John Jones won't fight him. We know that Stipe won't fight him. The only guy that will fight him is Aspinall. And Aspinall's already told you exactly what he would do if he fought Pereira. Ten seconds, I'm rugby tackling his ass. Because he doesn't want to stand with Alex Pereira. People are petrified of Alex Pereira's hands. But this is boxing. And while Jake Paul should be concerned about Alex Pereira's hands, Jake Paul has shown to be a pretty good boxer for his level. And I think it would make for one hell of a fun experience. I hate the gimmick fight, but if you want to give me a gimmick, give me a gimmick when he's fighting a current sitting light heavyweight champion who's bigger than him, taller than him, probably packs a bigger punch than him, and will come in weighing more than him. Because he'll weigh 235 or 240. They're gonna, if they fought, they'd fight at heavyweight. They wouldn't fight at 205. They'd fight at heavyweight. But Dana White will never let it happen. All that said, Jake Paul beat Mike Perry's ass. And it's time people start giving a little respect to, to Jake Paul for what he's doing. Because all the talkers aren't doing it. All these guys who talk shit, why aren't you stepping with Jake Paul? And show us what you got. Show us what you're made of. Show us how you can finish him off. Because a lot of people talk. None, none of them are backing it up. So that's all I got for, for this recap of that fight. I was very impressed with Jake Paul's performance. I thought he did a great job. I, I dominated like I expected. But, man, he, he threw some hands. And he had Mike Perry on, on, on ice skates the whole fight. Roller skates the whole fight. But that's all I got for today on Combat Corner. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and ring that bell. Come on now.